My name is Laura Rubish and I have lived in Barocca for about four years now. My husband and I have two little boys and they're six and eight. It seems like they were just babies and I'm not sure exactly how they're that old already. It's happening really quickly. We live in a little Amish hobby farm by Liberty Pole and it's just kind of amazing to be out here in the country after moving all around the country and living in big cities and sort of dreaming of this to actually finally be here. So we're making my favorite cake to make for a special occasion and I use a version of this cake for a lot of wedding cakes, um, birthday cakes, um, basically, if you leave it up to me when you order a cake, you're going to get some cake that's pretty close to this one. Um, it can be adapted really easily. And this one is going to be just a really rich, moist, simple vanilla cake, which is perfect for a birthday. You can add a lot of other things like fresh fruit to it and it blends beautifully. Um, so we're going to start with two sticks of butter or eight ounces if you're weighing it. And then we need to add our sugar. And that's going to be just about one and three quarters. I don't really ever measure anything really super precisely, just when it feels right. And that looks good. So a little bit less than two cups. And we'll get that going right here. You want your butter to be really soft, so it's room temperature. Not melty, but maybe even just a little past room temperature. So it blends really, really nicely with the sugar. And we'll give that long enough that it gets just a little bit fluffy. My personal connection with food is that um, my grandmother was very, very, very important to me growing up. And baking things from scratch was very important to her. So I think seeing her value those things gave them value to me growing up. Um, every single time that she visited, she would bring zucchini bread because my brother loved it. She would bring that. Um, she always made lemon meringue pie. She made the most beautiful lemon meringue pies that were just mounded with meringue and the tartest, sweetest lemon filling. Um, I always think of her when I think of lemon meringue pie. And she would make, um, every holiday, for probably 65 years, she would say, well, I think I'll make my Parker House rolls. Like it was the very first time that she'd ever done this in her life. And she was just getting this idea. And literally every single holiday, she would make these wonderful buttery rolled rolls. Um, so I think, you know, looking up to her as much as I did and having her be such a big part of my life really made me want to kind of have those same skills and, um, and learn that. She taught me how to make pie crust the first time. Um, I'd never made my own before. I always thought it was completely unattainable. I would never be able to do that. And she said, that, of course you'll make your own crust. Like it was a given, like everybody does it. Um, so yeah, that was probably the biggest personal connection that I had with, um, with food growing up. So this cake is gonna be a vanilla cake, like I said. If you want to give it a little bit of different flavor, a lot of times I'll add lemon zest to this cake or orange zest or some combination of um, just a little bit of citrus zest from one, you know, maybe one lemon, one and a half, and that'll give it a really nice flavor as well. Um, that's really nice in the summer if you're gonna add something like lemon curd. Okay, that's looking pretty good and fluffy. So we're gonna go ahead and add our eggs. And this is a pretty rich cake, so this is actually going to take four eggs. Go ahead and get those incorporated. I think for me, the biggest thing about baking and being a baker is that the kinds of things that I make really 
make people happy. They make people feel taken care of and comforted and they just give them good feelings. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now we're gonna add our vanilla. And since we really want this cake to have a really nice vanilla taste, um, I also want it to have the smell of vanilla. When you first cut into the cake, I want that to be one of the, um, the overpowering things that you notice right away is the wonderful scent of it. So we're gonna add kind of a lot of vanilla here. Two, three, I'll probably do about three and a half. There we go. Okay, so I've got my vanilla and my eggs incorporated. And we're gonna start with three cups of flour. And a tablespoon of baking powder. And then I need about half a teaspoon of salt. and get that all mixed together. You could, at this point, actually sift these dry ingredients and that could give you even a lighter, fluffier cake, but I'm not going to take the time to do that because I actually like it when the cake is just a little bit denser. I feel like you get that nice, moist cake feeling with that. Okay, so that's ready to go. And then we need one and a quarter cups of milk. I always use whole milk when I'm baking. In fact, if I don't have it, I'll add heavy cream to 2% or something like that. Just think it's really nice to get that wonderful, rich milk fat in there. Okay, now the best way to add the dry ingredients is gonna be to kind of stagger them with the wet. So we'll start with a little bit of the flour. do about half of the milk. And then some more of the flour. and put the rest of the milk in there. And then we'll go ahead and add the rest of this. When you get really comfortable with a recipe like this, then it can be really fun to experiment and kind of make it your own, adjust the proportions a little bit. As long as you have your basic butter, leavening agent, flour ratio that's, that's there, you can add a lot of different things to a simple recipe like this and really make it your own. Okay. And that looks really good. With this recipe, I'm looking for it to be really nice and thick. Um, you don't want to overmix it or it won't rise very well and it won't be, it won't taste as good. Okay. One thing I always do before I put it in the pans is take just a minute to make sure that everything's all mixed together because sometimes you get a little pocket of sugar or butter or something at the bottom and that doesn't work very well when you cook it. It can kind of almost explode in the oven and then you get like a weird spot on top of your cake that's not very pretty. Not that it'll show underneath the frosting, but. Okay, so that looks good. We'll go ahead and get it in our pans here. These are eight inch pans that I've got ready. Um, this is kind of a splurgy little thing for a home baker, but I love the pre-cut parchment rounds. Um, they just make life so easy. They're ready to go, spray them, slap them in there, and 
the cake doesn't stick. It's, um, you know, it's usually going to be a pretty happy celebration when somebody makes you a cake, like what we just did together. Um, you know, it's, maybe it's going to be your birthday or it's going to be even more special. Maybe it's your wedding or something like that. Or it's just somebody going above and beyond to try to show that they care or, you know, want to make you feel that way. So I think for me personally, things like that that are just a little bit over the top or a little bit more special baking things. Um, I just love the, the idea of giving that feeling to people. I think that's what draws me to it. Because it's gonna be a layer cake, um, which is really fun, because a layer cake just seems like a special occasion to me. It feels like an extra special treat to be on the receiving end of a layer cake, I think. Um, and that also gives us the ability to fill it with something really fun. In this case, we're gonna put a fruit filling in it, fresh berries, um, and Swiss meringue buttercream. Okay, so these look pretty good, pretty even. I usually take the time to give them a couple good thumps in case there's any little air bubbles trapped in there. You can see they're nice and smooth enough, ready to go, and we're gonna pop those in the oven. Okay, and this cake is gonna take about 35 to 40 minutes. So I like to start a little on the lower side. Um, I'd rather sneak up on it than have it be overdone so it doesn't dry out. So we're gonna start with about 36 minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and get that going. I've been a vegetarian most of my adult life and I've thought about food a lot and I've thought about trying to be healthy a lot. Um, but part of that conversation that was never really part of it for me until I moved here was where does the food come from? Where, who's growing it? Who's, who's making it? Who's, who's doing it? Um, you know, living in places that aren't like this area, you don't even really think about that, or at least I didn't. Um, but since I moved here, I think that the way that I baked has become much more seasonal. Like, when it's strawberry season, I'm using all the most beautiful strawberries that people that I know, that friends and farmers up the road are growing. Um, when it's asparagus season, it's, it's all about that. Like, what can I possibly do to make beautiful, savory things that have asparagus in them or, you know, whatever's in season. Um, that's become very important to me and also feeling like I want to support the, um, the local farmers and use exactly what they're, um, what they're producing. And um, yeah, so I think that my perspective has changed a lot since I moved here. Um, and I have a lot more value. I feel that there's so much more value that maybe I didn't see in the past um, in the local food culture and the local food economy. We are ready to go ahead and decorate this cake. Um, I have two layers here that are out of the oven, and these have cooled for a while. This is not what we just put in. This is another set that is um, nice and cool and ready to decorate. I think it's really important to take the time to not rush your cake and let it chill for a while. So when I am decorating a cake, um, I try to always factor that time in, get the cake cool. Once it's cool, get it in the refrigerator. Um, if you don't have that much time, even the freezer, put it in the freezer for 10 minutes or something. So you get it really nice and cool to work with. That way, um, it's gonna be a lot more stable. It's gonna hold up really well when you start icing it and decorating it. So what you wanna do, I typically end up putting one flat side down and then fill it and one flat side up so you have a really nice flat top to work with when you decorate it. But usually your cake is gonna dome. So we're gonna go ahead and take the time to trim that little dome off. And the great thing about this is that then you get lots of little bits to nibble on. My little boys are kind of a big fan of the uh, cake tops because that's usually the only part of the cake that they ever get to have. And you get a nice chunk off of there. Um, basically we just wanna make it flat enough that it's gonna sit really well. And don't worry about getting it too perfect. 
you can hide a world of hurt when you start decorating it. And actually, I don't really even like really perfect things that well. I like things to have a little more character, maybe be a little more imperfect. I always feel like that's how you know that it was made by hand, and I like that. I like to see that. Okay, so we've got that one nice and flat. So I've got um, a cake board here on a cake decorating wheel, and I'm gonna take some of my buttercream, and this is Swiss meringue buttercream that I have um, just flavored with just a little bit of vanilla. So it's really simple. It's a really light frosting. Um, you can add any different flavor to it that you want. But I really, really like to um, just keep that simple with berries like we're gonna use. So the vanilla is gonna be really nice with the berries. So we'll go ahead and stick that onto our cake board. We wanna make sure it's really nice and firm. That, again, is where that's really gonna shine that your cake is cold because it'll set up nicely and you don't want your layers slipping apart. Trust me, that is the voice of experience. <laughs> especially when you try to drive it somewhere. Um, you really don't want that to happen. So I make a lot of cakes, so I tend to buy these in packs of 50 or 100 at a time. I do try to reuse them as much as possible because I really don't like to use single-use plastics when I don't have to, but I'm also decorating a lot of cakes, and these are really handy. So I like the 16-inch size. You can get a lot more frosting in there. Um, this is a really basic tip that I think everybody who's doing any cakes should have. It's a 1A, and that's just a great big oversized open tip. Kind of a workhorse, handy, use it for everything tip. So we're gonna go ahead and fill our bag a little bit. And since I know that I'm gonna fill this cake, I'm gonna go ahead and um, pipe on a big ring around the edge. And this is a really stable frosting, so it's gonna really keep that, it's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna support the layer above it, and it's gonna also keep that, um, that filling from spilling out of our cake, because we do not want that to happen. Okay, so we've got that on there. Um, I also like to, at this time, just because I'm here, I'll start kind of going around the bottom of the cake. And then when we go to smooth it, it's really nice if you've kind of piped around the cake, it's gonna keep it nice and even and make it really easy to get. Pretty smooth finish. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Unless you want it to be perfect. And this is something that I use for lots of different things, so I tend to make a lot of it at once. Um, and I make that with fresh berries, usually blueberries. Um, I like to use raspberries because they give it such a really bright flavor. Um, but then you have to make sure that you seed it because you don't want all those raspberry seeds in there. So it's just a really thick, really bright, not overly sweet fruit filling. I use this on top of my cheesecakes. Um, it's just kind of a nice basic. Um, and this one I've added orange zest and I've added vanilla to it. So it's just a really nice complement to our vanilla cake and our vanilla frosting and our fresh berries. So we're gonna load it up so you get a lot of that filling when you cut into the cake. So what I do when I make this is I cook it down. I start with the fresh berries and I cook them and I add a little sugar and I will add the fruit zest at that point and then whiz it up in the blender and then I'll add just a little bit of um, cornstarch and then I'll put it back on and cook it a little bit until it thickens and gets a little more stable. So I'm gonna take some of our nice fresh berries here and just tuck some inside so you get a little hit of fresh berry when you cut into this cake. Raspberries. I'm even going to stick some blueberries in here. And the fresh berries also, I think, kind of bear the weight of the cake as well. So 
they help support it. Which with a cake this size isn't really that big a deal, but when you get into a bigger cake, we'll take all the help we can get to help support them because they get really heavy. Okay, so that's looking like a hot mess right now, but it won't for long. I'm gonna get this one trimmed. Just kind of visually look at it. That is definitely not flat. <laughs> so I'll come back here and saw some more off of it. And again, the more we cut off, the more we get later. They do make some really neat little tools that, you know, are probably much more sophisticated for doing that sort of thing. I just like to keep it simple. We're gonna push that into place as much as we can. We wanna kinda of nest it down in there so it sits really firm and solid and it's gonna seem stable. And then I'm gonna give it just a little bit of an eyeball here and make sure that it seems, seems pretty flat. If you're not rushed for time, you can actually take the time to put some of your frosting um, on the cake refrigerate the cake, and then come back and frost it again. Um, they call that a crumb coat. And that way you won't end up with any little cake crumbs in it. It's not necessarily that big a deal. I worry more about that with chocolate cakes because they might show a little bit more. So we're gonna start smoothing that out. We want a nice even layer on the top. I definitely want to make sure that it's got a nice seal there on that inside because we don't want our cake to get spoiled with filling running out of it. So I always kind of take the time to make sure that that is kind of tucked in there really well. Come back in here with our bag and fill that in some more. So there's a few different tools that you can use to tidy up a cake and get it iced kind of evenly. Um, this one has a nice edge on it. Um, these are also really handy. Though I actually like the smaller size of that a little bit better. I use this one kind of a lot more. And then we're just gonna come around here and run this around a few times until it looks smooth enough that we're happy with it. To me, the flavor, the smell, the scent, that experience of it is a lot more important to me than a totally flawless presentation. So that is not usually what you'll find in my cakes. <laughs> I think for me, the biggest thing about baking and being a baker is that the kinds of things that I make really make people happy. They make people feel taken care of and comforted and they just give them good feelings. Personally, I really want to continue to be a part of the local conversation when it comes to baking. Um, I started my own business in October through a pop-up shop grant, which has been incredible. It's absolutely exceeded my expectations and has shown me 
in a lot of ways that I have something of value that I feel like the community is is very open to receiving and I'm very grateful for that and I don't want to stop doing that. Um, so that's, you know, personally, I definitely plan to continue with my, my little baking company um, and hopefully grow that. I'd like to move into um, a larger freestanding kitchen, um, maybe whether it's um, staying at the current retail space that I'm at, which would be fantastic and maybe doing some upgrades there down the road or something. I'm not sure exactly, but I definitely am I'm not going anywhere. There's this moment when you open a box of a cake like this that has so much real vanilla. Never use fake vanilla. Don't ever use that stuff. Um, use the real stuff if you can. If you can't, then use what you have. But um, there's a moment when you open that box where it has berries and it has vanilla or it has lemon curd or it has something just really fresh and bright where you just get this overpowering scent. And I enjoy that almost as much as eating the cake. Um, okay, so now we've got a bunch of really pretty berries. And um, I'm feeling pretty good about how that cake looks. You know, it's not perfect, but it's not meant to be. So let's come in here and start adding some berries. And I usually just kind of put them on here kind of randomly. Um, one of my favorite styles of cake is just kind of fresh berries um, on the top. Sometimes I'll kind of pile up the whole cake if I have a lot of them, you know, maybe in June or July or something when berries are easy to come by. Right now in Wisconsin they are not, so every berry is precious. So I'll do kind of like a, a crown of berries around the top. And just kind of tuck in as many as you feel comfortable with. I like to use um, strawberries and I always like to cut them because I think they look really pretty that way. And then you get that nice little hint of green too, which I think adds a lot to it. And again, when it's strawberry season, the whole cake would be strawberry because there's nothing better than strawberries when they're in season. But right now we take what we can get. a reason to it. Just put a bunch of them on there. I like to kind of put the bigger berries first and then when I have some little nooks and crannies I'll come back in with the blueberries. Growing up in northern Michigan it just seemed like blueberries were something that was just hours in Michigan. We had this amazing blueberry season in the fall, the August, September when it was hot. And I remember so many times just going and picking blueberries and eating blueberries until I just couldn't even look at them anymore. So I always kind of think of that when I get out these nice blueberries. Like the finished cake for me personally the aesthetic that I enjoy is to have kind of like a really 3d sculptural almost effect with all the berries so you've just got a really pretty massive pile of them I feel like that looks really impressive it can be tricky to get in a cake box so I always make sure to buy the tallest cake boxes I can when I order them because I know that I'm really gonna load them up Okay, I'm kind of liking that. 
And then, right now, because it is December, it is pomegranate season. Oops, not belong there. So that's kind of a special treat that only happens for such a short amount of time. So every time it's pomegranate season, I try to include pomegranates in everything that I make. I feel like they are just such a bright, tart, sweet, unique flavor. And there's just something about a pomegranate that makes you feel like you're a little bit healthier for having eaten it. I don't know that that's necessarily true, but I always think that when I eat pomegranates. So that seems to um, go really well with a cake somehow. <laughs> also give a really nice little bit of crunch to it too. So it just adds a little more complexity to the cake. Again, trying to get away from the overarching just sweetness of a dessert. And there we have it. I'm happy with that. Um, actually, sometimes if I have enough frosting and I really want to be a little fancy, um, I'll take another um, cake de decorating tip, and um, this one is, this isn't a Takeo, yeah, this is a 32, and that's just a really open star tip. Um, that's another one that I use a lot, kind of a go-to tip for me. And I think there's just enough of this beautiful frosting left to do that, so. One thing you really want to make sure of with these bags is that you don't have an air bubble. So I always try to work the frosting down so it fills that and there's no gap and there's no bubble of air because it actually kind of explodes out of the end and you get frosting everywhere and it makes your cake a mess and that's kind of heartbreaking when that happens. So if you really want to and you want to kind of like add a little something around the bottom of the cake, use whatever tip you want, but you can um, you know, add a little something like that just to jazz it up a little bit. That also, I think, kind of anchors it to the cake board a little bit more too. So again, if you're bringing the cake somewhere or traveling with it, you want all the help with that you can get. Another thing that I really like to do is um, I don't use a lot of things like jimmies or decorations like that that are kind of pre-made. I really like to use more natural things, but these are something that I really enjoy because they are actually just um, a really nice dark chocolate. Um, so I get these at kind of a specialty baking store and you can get them in large quantity in bulk or you know, just little things. Um, and they're just like little flakes. And I think just a tiny little flake of chocolate can really just add a little extra sophistication to the cake too. And sometimes, um, especially with the chocolate cake, I'll add those just around the bottom too. I just want to continue to be a part of supporting the local food culture as much as I possibly can, be involved in it, um, and hope that it continues to thrive. I think it's been really tough for farmers in Wisconsin for a lot of reasons, and you know, as much as we can possibly support our farmers, I want to be able to be there to do that. This is my favorite part, um, the part where we actually get to eat the cake. Um, so this is an eight inch cake. I always tell people to plan on serving 10 to 14 people with a cake this size, depending on how generously you cut the slices. I am always known for cutting the slices incredibly generously, <laughs> even more than I mean to, but you know, it's not a bad thing. Here's a quote from 
Julia Child, who I adore. It is something like, a party without cake is just a meeting. So I say, bring the cake on, the more the merrier. You know, it's usually gonna be a pretty happy celebration when somebody makes you a cake, like what we just did together. Um, you know, it's, maybe it's gonna be your birthday or it's gonna be even more special. Maybe it's your wedding or something like that. Or it's just somebody going above and beyond to try to show that they care. So we can see we've got that nice filling in there and fresh berries. Um, and since we took the time to level the cake out, it all sits together really well. And we got that nice big chunk of icing in there to keep our filling from coming out. I like to get a little bit of everything in every bite. That just makes me happy. That's good. <laughs> I think for me personally, things like that that are just a little bit over the top or a little bit more special baking things. Um, I just love the, the idea of giving that feeling to people. I think that's what draws me to it.